E3 is being done in a loose digital format again this year, so it doesn't have the fanfare of a typical E3 style conference. On top of this, arguably the most hyped game of the past three years has been released, and while I enjoyed Cyberpunk 2077, even I had to inject a tiny bit of copium to say that last sentence. And frankly, a release as high profile as that being that disappointing for some, it should make everyone a bit more sceptical of hype trains. But that being said, I still think we should celebrate E3 and be happy for it because it means I don't have to come up with an original idea for a video. I just have to make a few sarcastic remarks for six minutes while contributing absolutely nothing to the conversation. Since the purpose of E3 is to generate false expectations, I decided to make a few predictions of my own about a week ago. So here's the recording I did, which was 100% off the cuff and was not in fact the second take because I held the mic too close to my face. Today is the 10th of June when I'm recording this. You have no right to believe me on this, but it is. At the moment, Battlefield 2042 has only been revealed. I think the gameplay trailer is going to be heavily edited and only really show us one map. The Pokemon presentations are going to focus more on Diamond and Pearl than they are Legends Arceus or Arceus, however the fuck you pronounce it. Starfield and Elden Ring, I don't think they're gonna happen. Uh, Starfield to me, I think does have the potential to be the Cyberpunk 2077 in terms of hype and given that it's Bethesda developing it, probably also Cyberpunk 2077 in terms of bugs. Ghostwire Tokyo will be showing some gameplay and then announcing a delay. Deathloop, uh, it'll be showing some gameplay and telling us things we already know. Far Cry 6, going to be showing us some gameplay, probably on a mission where uh, Giancarlo Espotio, I, I can't remember his fucking name. They're going to be showing him extensively uh, in this level, despite the fact I feel he's not going to be involved that much with the story, as is the case with most Far Cry villains. Besides that, Hideo Kojima is going to announce his VTuber debut, and finally, they are going to announce a new character for Smash Bros. Now, we've all been wondering who it is. There have been, you know, rumours going about online who's plausible, but I think, you know, we've all come to a conclusion. We all kind of guess who it's going to be, you know? Say it with me. That's right. Abby from The Last of Us Part 2. Mmm. Don't we all just look forward to Abby? Except she's gonna play exactly like a sword character, but instead of a sword, it's a golf club. All my homies hate Abby. Anyway, uh, now over to me in the future. Thanks, me from the past. Please shave, you disgusting creature. So, today is the 16th of June, and E3 has, for the most part, splooged its load, with the E3 and Sony conferences to act as the embarrassing bit that gets washed away by the urine when you go to pee. And in order to distract you from the fact I just wrote that metaphor, let's kick things off by talking about Battlefield 2042 was the property I was putting my hype bucks behind this E3, and while I was 100% right about the trailer being heavily edited and telling us nothing that we didn't know already, I am still cautiously looking forward to this game. But I'm not pre-ordering for several reasons. One, the map count is pitiful, especially considering that the current gen versions are going to be downsized. Two, crossplay hasn't been confirmed. I assume that if it happens, it would only be between consoles of the same generation, but I would still like it to be a feature at launch. Finally, the other modes are rumoured to be non-respawn affairs and that rubs me up the wrong way. Battlefield is known for encouraging people to do wacky shit in multiplayer while getting rewarded for it, and to make it quote unquote tactical would be a waste, especially now that they have reduced competition since COD started focusing on BR. I've been thinking about this for a while, but EA could easily be making one of the best FPS games ever, provided they stick to the franchise's pre-established foundations of prioritizing instant respawn, vehicle versus infantry combat, and as little downtime in fighting as possible. And that would make a lot of fans, including myself, really happy. But they haven't announced Titanfall 3 yet, so in the meantime we're just going to have to see what they can do with Battlefield. Square Enix have just remembered that they made other Final Fantasy games besides FF7 and FF15, and are remaking the first six Final Fantasy games, or to give it a snappier title, Final Fantasy VI and some other stuff I guess. They announced a Guardians of the Galaxy game, which looks to combine looter shooters with the Tales series, by which I mean it has the battle system of the latter and the particle effects, tedious looting and shitty dialogue of the former. Speaking of shitty dialogue, there's a new Life is Strange game coming out, although this is coming from Deck 13 instead of Don't Nod. Now, people might be worried that Deck 13 will make a bad Life is Strange game, but I think that those people shouldn't worry. 
because Don't Nod haven't made a good Life is Strange game either, so they should be fine. I know I probably shouldn't, but I kind of pity Marvel's Avengers. We shrugged it off when it was announced, then we shrugged it off even harder when it actually came out. Don't get me wrong, the only reaction this game deserves to elicit is an uncaring shrug, but you've got to give Square Enix credit for beating a dead horse, except that metaphor implies that the horse was alive at some point. I wrote that last bit before Square Enix's presentation, expecting they would showcase some Avengers content briefly while trying to make us forget about it, but no, it was almost put up front and centre of their presentation, which I would praise for being the most committed a publisher has been to a shit game at this year's E3, but that isn't the case because that distinction goes to, it's still going. Despite their better judgments, they're still going on with this. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at this point. Bethesda are now part of Microsoft's conference, but apparently no one at Bethesda got the memo, seeing as they're strutting around like they own the place. Starfield got a trailer and a release date, which is a pleasant surprise. All we have to know now is what it is, and where those two games that they're meant to be releasing later this year are. But Microsoft took the opportunity to also reveal Halo Infinite's multiplayer, which doesn't actually look half bad. I think, haven't really played any Halo, but considering it's free, if I do end up buying an Xbox Series X, I'll probably pick it up, before immediately dropping it while calling it BTEC Titanfall. Supposedly Sony were actually intending to show up, it's just that the weight of the PS5s they were planning to run the demos on were too heavy to get onto any stage that Sony could have filmed a conference on, but I think there was an announcement for Horizon Forbidden West, I haven't watched it because I don't want to spoil Zero Dawn, but I've heard the gameplay looks good, so uh, props I guess. That's uh, always true of a final product. Ubisoft's conference came and went with a resounding Eek. There really isn't anything worth mentioning about Rainbow Six Extraction, apart from this moment in the trailer which used the Modern Warfare 2 intervention quickscope sound. I was completely right about Far Cry 6, but then again, Ubisoft being predictable is a revelation on the same level as oxygen is breathable, the sun is hot, and maybe the reason people don't talk to me is because of my general insufferability. Although it wasn't all unsurprising, since the last trailer they showed was for a quote unquote hot property they had a collaboration with. I was thinking that this was going to be their segue into revealing that Star Wars game they have the right to develop, but as it turns out, it was a fucking Avatar game. And I've got to say, I'm kind of impressed. I was expecting a game that looks impressive, will make a lot of money, yet is immediately forgettable, but I was not expecting it to be based on the movie that embodies looks impressive, made a lot of money, yet is immediately forgettable. This is an announcement that makes me feel so middle of the road that it might actually be an effective replacement for Floxity. The last conference of the season that I actually gave a shit about was Nintendo's. I'm going to preface this section by saying that I don't own a Switch, and I'm not the kind of guy who creams their pants at the mere mention of Mario Menagerie, but the Pokemon reveals from earlier this year actually had me hopeful that Nintendo would showcase something that would pique my interest. Don't get me wrong, they didn't say shit about any Pokemon titles, and the majority of it was fairly mundane. Two Point Campus appears to be an organising sim based around managing a university. I thought it was just going to be a PC exclusive since the procrastinate, act pretentious and regret decisions buttons would be hard to map onto consoles. Kazuya is being added to Smash, so now it means we have Street Fighter characters able to fight against a character from their biggest rival franchise. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> He's not from Mortal Kombat? Where's he from then? <laughs> oh, right, let me redo that. And now it means we have Street Fighter characters able to fight against a character from the Tekken series. Again. Shin Megami Tensei 5 seems to be going in a direction that appeals to a bunch of noobs who have only played Persona 5 and want to pretend that they know other SMT games. For some reason I quite like the look of it. There's a Mario Party remastering, which I'm optimistic for, mainly because it just means more Hololive collabs. Breath of the Wild 2 is actually still in development, so I guess it looks good, but frankly I don't care because MORE METROID BABY! Metroid Dread is set after the events of Metroid Fusion, finally a continuation of the timeline. They seem to be bringing back the mechanics from the second best remake of Metroid 2. Good stuff, that game was pretty slick, although not quite as slick as a certain other property. I just hope that it lives up to the Dread in its title, since I'd rather this game felt more like Metroid Fusion than Super Metroid. I personally prefer Fusion because that game was fantastic with its horror elements, and definitely Definitely not because it's more linear, thus more easy than Super Metroid. Who am I kidding? And of course, we have to mention that Elden Ring got a trailer, which means that the majority of my predictions for this year were wrong. But that being said, let's conclude by having a look at the interview with Hideo Kojima where he announced Death Stranding, somehow even longer cutscenes edition. But what I want to focus on is this bit of the interview, where he stresses that he makes entertainment. He does not make games, he makes 
entertainment. By that logic, the game development company he owns is an entertainment company. Like Hololive. I was fucking right all along, baby. Hideo Kojima VTuber debut. Let's fucking go. Obviously, that part was a joke. Hideo Kojima didn't make a VTuber debut at this year's E3. He already debuted, and they were Pekora the entire time. Or, to give her her proper name, the world's first strand-type war criminal. 